My name is Davin Sturdivant, and in this video, we're going to learn how to read acceleration traces in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIMSport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. Okay, so Roger, we've looked at data traces in other videos before, and more specifically, we focused on braking. But what about acceleration? Yeah, I think I think there's three when when you talk basics, right? There's there's three areas. Of course, there's the braking, there's the cornering, and there's the acceleration. And and those are the three areas that we kind of focus on when we're looking at things. And while we've done one on braking, we've looked a little bit in one of the other ones at some cornering things. But but let's look at some acceleration zones and just to to to, to give you a few things just to, to to study, to look for, to look at during the during your data analysis and we're going to look at this David PGP heat race again so again we just highlight it and we can just open the test and it, uh, and, and race studio software always opens up to the to, to the last place that you left it and it always opens the best lap mm -hmm. right so the, here we are we're looking at a, at a lap right I've got I happen to have a third of my my uh, screen being the uh, a GPS map of this exact same lap obviously and um, so they're kind of linked together so we can see where we are on the track and the way that I look at it uh, as we mentioned just a second ago we've got braking zones right here this is a big braking zone we've got all these 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 V's are or, or, or used at the bottom of the the lowest speed areas these are all the corners of course and the in the apex down here right at the apex of the clipping point right down here at the, at the at the lowest part of the speed trace and and those are important areas because they lead on to the next you know to the next straightaway and and uh, those exit speeds are critical obviously and then the of course the the, the that last piece we're going to chat about during this video is the, is this acceleration zone itself and and, and things to look for and when you're looking at a single lap like we're looking at right now there's not a whole lot to to see right where it's uh, the, right. yes there is a, a rate of acceleration the, the, in this case a blue line it is just climbing and it goes from down here at the at the base you know about uh, 33 miles an hour 33.6 and it climbs all the way up here to, to 49.6 that amongst itself doesn't give us a whole lot of things to work with so uh, what what we'll do is we're, let's add a second lap and then we'll we'll start to look at just another lap from this same driver and we'll start to look at just some differences and, and ways that you study uh, that piece of the of, of the data to, to get a, a better handle on what you're looking at. So let's just uh, let's add lap four. We have lap five happen to be the fastest lap. So I'm going to la add lap four just by double clicking down in the test laps toolbar. And now I've got two laps. One's red, one's blue. Hmm. I've got my per lap color. We've talked about that in the past up here in the upper left hand corner. So my global colors are are blue and red and and so the speed traces are are, are those matching colors. And and of course in the GPS map that same global color you know, pulls across there as well. So so let's just let's just study this first uh this back straightaway. I, I call it the back straightaway because it's it's uh it's the longest straightaway about halfway through the about halfway through the course here. So there's there's the back straightaway, right? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this one and let's compare the two laps. Just to just to get an idea of the of the differences and uh, between these uh, same driver same cart they're back to back laps, right? So so I'm going to use a, a little different method of zooming in. We're going to use the zoom tools that are up here in the in the secondary icon toolbar. And the little plus sign is the zoom enabled button. If we click on that one time, it turns to a little magnifying glass and we can just click on anywhere in the map and then drag, hold the left mouse button down and drag that across. I like to grab a little extra, but and uh, so now we're looking at you know, that same straightaway we were just looking at a moment ago. The interesting thing about this one is and, and the and the the way that I like to look at whenever I'm looking at two different lines is, is I look at the, the two different traces and I, you know, I use a, the concept of parallel lines. 
they're right on top of each other, or they're raise, rising at the same rate, or or they're converging, or they're diverging. They're going apart from each other, or they're coming together, or they're running the, the same, you know, parallel to each other. In this particular straightaway, the driver has come off of the corner here, and yeah, through the middle of the corner, the blue lap was a, was a little bit quicker, but at the corner exit, right here where I've got the cursor, you know, they're both at 33.8 miles per hour. Right, so they're they're heading on up this long straightaway. Yeah, it's uh you know 2,500 feet to about 20 you know 2850, so 350 feet long straightaway or so, and um, and you notice that they're about the same speed, same speed, and then all of a sudden something happens, and they start to to diverge. The blue one ends up being a little bit quicker. And so, so you look at that and you go, okay, if, if this was a qualifying versus a race lap, you know, what was changed? Did he change the carburetor? Did he change the, you know, the, the, the gearing? You know, is there a reason behind it? In this case, it's the same cart. It's the same, you know, it's back-to-back -back laps. The, the, mechanically, the cart is the same, right? So, so then you're, you have to look at this and go, okay, well, well Why? You know, we're back to that why question that we always ask ourselves in data. Right. You know, what happened? Where did it happen? Why did it happen? We've got a difference in speed. That's the what. The where is about a third of the way down the straightaway. You know, there starts to be, at least even visually, we can start to see the, 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 the divergence of these two speed traces. It may have happened even a little earlier. And then the third question is always why. Okay, so with a speed trace, we only have the money channel of speed. We only know what happened. Mm -hmm. So let's turn on let's turn on our lateral G trace, which we come over here to the to the measures and laps toolbar and just click on the name, and that'll add a second that channel into our into our graph, and then we can start looking at this. And now this lateral G is the left and right forces to the cart. If if the driver turns the steering wheel to the left, the, we get a buildup of negative G's left and right. If it turns to the right, and uh, you know the opposite of that, you get positive G's. So here it, here's the driver as I as I scroll to the right, you know down the track, you can see this is a right hand corner that the driver is going around. Right there is at the apex. We've got the the peak of our lateral G's. They're positive, as you can see here. It is a right hand corner getting onto the back straightaway. So there's your positive G's, and you can see that the you know the red one's a little bit slower. Let's not worry that about that one too much. But right here they are together. The driver is starting to release the steering wheel, and the lateral G's are decreasing back down towards zero. Carts, uh, when you're when you're barely having any lateral G's to them, it's not enough to lift that in you know the inside tire, you know, flex the chassis and get that inside tire lifted up, and you can't you know you're bound up still until you get down here down near to zero G's. So the cart is accelerating up to this point, and then look at what happens right about there. We have that separation we chatted about. The blue starts going faster. Mm -hmm. And if you look, I'm going to snap back just a touch so we can see it. But you see what happened with the red trace, with the red lap on the lateral Gs. The driver comes down, and on the blue one, let's jump to the blue one first. He releases, gets to zero Gs, and then just basically sits there at zero Gs all the way up the acceleration, up the straightaway, mm. all the way till he goes to turn into the next corner down here. Mm. So very, very smooth with his hands. He got to the got to straight and held it straight. On the red lap, however. He actually, when he got down here to the where he was pretty well going straight, he actually turned the wheel and, and started to turn left just a little bit. You can see some negative Gs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then turn right mm -hmm. and then turn left again a little bit. Mm -hmm. and in other words, went off, you know, had is doing some corrections with the steering wheel, which is creating some lateral Gs. Mm -hmm. And and when, when the driver did that, that binds up the cart just enough where we go from being, you know, basically at the same speed till we get down here towards the end of the straightaway and there is you know th three or four tenths you know as much as about a half a half a mile per hour difference here towards the end of the straightaway right, right. so it, yeah so it, it it becomes something that you can see pretty clearly in the speed trace that that uh, boom you know there's something different so then you have to go back and ask yourself why and you right. start bringing up some channels right well, so, you know, I know this track pretty well, and so, like, that corner there, I know, is turn four, right where you're coming off of, because it's BGP, and there are some curbs there on the exit, like, um, some rumble strippy curbs there, and, you know, right in, there. You're right in there, yeah, so when you look at the G on the red line, because it doesn't go up a lot, it doesn't go down a lot, do you think maybe particularly that driver may have just dropped a tire, maybe? Like, let's, let's, let's zoom in a little bit on the GPS map. And so I'm, I'm just clicked in the GPS map, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there. 
And what you can see when we actually start to study that a little bit closer is back here where the driver is coming off, the blue the blue cart, the blue lap, is, is out a little bit wider already. Oh. And you can see in this, look at the difference between what the red line is doing. I'm going to pull that up just a yeah. little bit. You see down here where we first see this little pull to the, to the, to the driver's left, the driver is actually turning to, you know, pulling it off of the inside edge yeah. a little bit more and pulling out to, to move drivers left to move this direction on the track. Yeah. And then up here, then, okay, well, let's go back the other way. And you can see the, see the yeah, trace yeah. is moving now to the other yeah. way yeah. and uh, on the middle of the straightaway and then pulled it over here and now turned left again and is moving, getting set up for the, for the yeah. following the little kink that's right here yeah. and getting, moving the cart over to, to get to that kink. So he's weaving. Yeah. Weaving just a little bit, and, and yeah. whether it was a he's following somebody or right. passing somebody, we don't know that for sure. Right. But what we do know is movement of the steering wheel is small as it is, only to create as much as 0.16, not even two tenths of a g, slows the cart down, especially on lower horsepower carts. Right. Right. It, it's doing it on the higher horsepower as well, but it but uh, it, it's exaggerated a little bit more with the low lower. This is a four stroke cart, right? Yeah. So. So uh, any movement like this really has an effect on the on on the on the speed of the car. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I, I don't want to dive too deep on this one corner for too long, but you know, kind of keeping it in the area of why. Um, if you were maybe coaching a driver or working on another driver with a situation like that, that might be an example of if you, let's say you weren't passing somebody, but you were trying to set someone up. That might be a good example of uh, the detriment of weaving too early or just guessing when you're trying to make a move rather than just making the move. Like, exactly. you know, you could make the argument that if, if you're coming off the corner with somebody based on this data, right? If you're coming off the corner with somebody, it is almost better to just roll up the straight along with them and keep that speed rather than trying to like just get over there and get back over there and get back over there. Because by the time you get to the end of the straightaway, you've effectively made the corner longer, right? And you're slowed down. <laughs> you have slowed the cart you down. You slowed the cart down. And, yeah. and, uh, anytime we, we, we talk a lot about opening, opening your hands, right? Opening the wheel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and here the, the driver kept the red lap pinched down a little bit and then moved it over physically. Mm -hmm. He could have freed it up way back here at the, uh, at the exit of the corner. Mm -hmm. And and his speed here would have been even better. Right. So he got a lot of his rotation done early. You can see by some some more G's early in, on the entry to that corner and and some things that he did to get the rotation done. And but yet he didn't free it up. And if he had just opened his hands back here, it would have had even better speed all the way. And then you know drive like there's an egg between your 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 ribs and the seat, right? And you don't want to break it. So turning left and right on that wheel is 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 literally just speed down the straightaway. It's as be as smooth as possible. It's it's really really important. That makes sense. Let's look at the next the next little piece. There's another straightaway, you know, after that, and uh, it just just this is the same concept of parallel or converging or diverging, you know, speed traces or any kind of lines, but speed traces is what we're looking at here. And you can see that the 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 red line comes off here, and then all of a sudden the the uh, the, the blue one picks up a little bit, and then the red one really gains some speed on the blue one here at the end. Did the blue one lose some speed? Did the red one, you know, gain? Let's let's take a look, right? So in, in this case, the the blue one, you know, had some real speed here at the end, and on this one, the red one is actually gathering some speed at the end. And why and why do we think it happened, right? So let's go back to you know all the way back here to the uh, approaching the apex of the corner. The blue one's down inside. And, and is charging that corner pretty hard. You can see by the speed trace right here, right in, in the measures graph. And then, and that did not hurt that driver a bit. The exit speed was still good. And the exit speed was actually even better in comparing to the, to the red lap. You know, the exit speed was still great. And, and everything is going really well until this last little bit. And we're just trying to figure out why, why did it lose some speed there at the end, right? And again, we're just studying a speed trace. You know, we, what happened? I lost a little speed. Where did it happen? You know, this last 10%, last 20% of the straightaway. Yeah, you know, why? Right. Well, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this lateral G trace again. Again, a low horsepower cart, where where momentum is everything and keeping every mile per hour you got in your pocket, keeping it there. Right. Don't lose anything because it's important. So so here we are going up the straightaway. The red lap is actually releasing the, the, the steering a little bit earlier. The blue one is, is is got a little bit G still up at the same spot on the track. But the trouble is, is take a look at what, what did the blue driver do going down the straightaway? 
because of his, he was way out here to the left, not way, but farther to the left than the red one. He actually, you know, had the rotation of the cart and was coming across here. And at this point up here, right here is actually having to turn to the left slightly because he over rotated the cart in this back in this part of, you know, the late apex, late uh, exit of the corner. So he's driving down here. And at this point here, he's having to rotate the cart a little bit to the left driver's left. And that, so he ends up with about 12 hundredths of a G or so 0.12 G compared to the red one being almost, you know, 0 0.002 or 0 0.02. And what happens is because the red one is sitting there with the wheels basically straight and the blue one's turning a little bit to the left, not a ton. Look at how it pulls from being at about, you know, five, um, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, five, a half a mile per hour, right? Five tenths of a mile per hour. And then as it gets closer to, you know, near the end of the straightaway up in, you know, up in this area is within two tenths of a mile per hour. It's all because the blue one had a little bit of wheel in it, you know, actually moving, you know, rotating the cart back to the left just that little bit. It It is amazing that, uh, especially with low, hor low horsepower carts, when you don't have enough G to pick that inside tire up, mm -hmm. that just that little bit of wheel movement where you're not releasing that inside tire will pull the carts down just that little bit. So yeah. uh, by looking at some speed traces, it's just some interesting things to look at and uh, – to remind you to um, to be really smooth with your hands, get the rotation done as early as you can in the corner, and 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 unwind that wheel, and then don't do anything with it, you know, as best you can, obviously, <laughs> uh, up straightaways, and and not uh, and not be dramatic with the with your with your hand movements will create speed at the end of the straightaway. That's the end of this aim learn fast video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want us to cover another topic. Visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about Micron products.